Hey everyone, this is Aya. Thank you so much for joining me on my podcast, Trigger Happy, which is um, a flowering workbook to assist you in using your triggers in a playful way. I um, drew the cover of the um, workbook and it's a, a rabbit with a holster and a gun. It's pretty funny looking, right? And then on the back of the workbook is the rabbit with the bullseye with another rabbit as at the center. And when I thought about it, looked at it, I started laughing and I'm like, well, isn't that insane? A rabbit killing another rabbit? <laughs> That's stupid. Why would they do that? But it's it's what we do with our energy, words, and thoughts, um, and deeds all the time. And it's like we're so desensitized to it. We're used to it. And to ask us to pull away from being that way and living in a more a more loving, not more loving, but in the loving way of life that actually feels insane to a lot of people um to a lot of us um even me i include myself in that because i need the same reminders that i give others i need the same teaching the same uh, mind healing from fear um and the same release and relief that there is nothing to fear there is only love and then getting into that sensation of what love actually is and recognizing what love is not um everything that i've ever done in this type of space to assist other people is to Point your awareness in the direction of where what love is not. Like the areas where you're crying out for love to where you're like, um, well, I, I'm not going to be loved if I don't have a, a, a relationship or I, I'm not, I don't feel loved if I don't get the house I want, which was, which has been me um in recent past or in, I, I won't be loved if you know my dreams don't come true i won't feel loved and um and it's kind of the the mind is like this it goes okay well then you won't and so then and so then you're participating in your own demise and you don't even really realize it when you put conditions on something that's unconditional. It's like you don't have to not feel loved, but you're choosing to not feel loved. And to get people to to allow people the space and opportunity because I'm I'm changing that mindset. I don't have to get people to do, feel, think, change anything, you know. Um, I just need to be loving. I just need to love. I just need to be, I only need to be what I am and that's enough. And what is what I am? You know, today, um, I have potentially a lot of things I could have on my mind to stress me out or, um, I don't know why I have this like dark space right here. Is it because of where my camera is at? I don't, I don't know where this shadow is coming from. Do I need to lift up my light more or whatever? But I know it's kind of annoying me a little bit. Would it help if I... I need side light. That's really what I need. It would be coming from this way. Because I did used to have the light over here. 
and then I put it right here and it creates this shadow. I'm not a perfectionist at this at all. I just wanted to have um, some type of quality and I do. That's enough. Okay. Um, yeah, so love and, and being loving and I was talking about I could have I could potentially stress myself over some things like we all have that opportunity every day presented to us in different ways you can use your mind to stress yourself out if you would like but I decided to ask the Holy Spirit to assist me with my life with my mind with how I look at things and she said, it said, be calm, just be calm. And it gave me like an impression of the times I have been calm and how things have went for me in that space. And it's not necessarily about perfection, but calmness for me is love because i i don't come across like i'm um forcing anything right and i'm not i'm allowing i'm not demanding any everyone in the universe and god respond to me how i need you to in order for me to feel love and so anytime we're um in a space to where we're agitated because things aren't going our way. My understanding of that is, I know everyone has like different interpretations of the reasons why they do things, but I like to simplify things because we're essentially all the same. <laughs> we're freaking all the same. You know, we're irritated because we're afraid that love isn't going to be there for us in whatever way we think it needs to show up. When love is limitless, boundless, and it comes in many different forms, shapes and sizes, and it doesn't need our stamp of approval in order to be you know you don't have any control over it it just is it is and there's nothing that you can wrap your mind around and understand so what is it for you my my um guides inner guidance the holy spirit angels whatever you want to call her it he told me to be calm be calm just be calm and for me being calm looks like um allowance allowing every allowing information to be sent back and forth without me worrying about the um the form you know but just what I'm doing, what the the content is love. Like I'm being in love by being calm, by allowing, like you know, getting a bunch of emails and uh, saying no, you no, 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 no to whatever opportunities and stuff that I'm looking for, and being calm about it, and and saying thank you, thank you for even responding to me and letting me know, instead of being like. Oh, I, this isn't going to, I knew it wasn't going to happen. Nobody likes me. Nobody loves me, you know? And so that opportunity still is within me, within my reach. I can reach in for that, but I, I do see it there. It's interesting. It's like, okay, so the Holy Spirit said, be calm. And that calm automatically came over me because I knew what she was telling me, what it was talking about, Right. And I went into that space. And then that other part, that split mind, the craziness, it's still there. 
And so I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do I do with that? You know, because I can still feel that block of it, blockages or whatever of energies that feel like I'm blocked, I'm blocked. And it just, it's like, wow, I have, if I have that energy, that allowance energy inside, and I also have that block energy inside, only one of them really matters. And the Holy Spirit said nothing. Like he didn't say, it said, do, it basically said, do nothing about it. Nothing. Nothing. You don't do anything with it. You just be calm. And that takes a lot of the pain and the drama and the franticness out of the conversation, the inner conversation. Um, in that energy of calm and peace, which is love, there is nothing to, um, I wouldn't, I don't like to say there's nothing to do because I, that's what I wanted to say. There's nothing to do. But I, I was kind of like spending time in that calm space and just kind of observing it. And like what I see is that there's a difference when I do things in that peaceful state. Because that's what I was praying about on my walk this morning with Miss Lily, with my um, beautiful baby pet, um, is that I want everything that I've been told it has to be a struggle and strife in life to not be like that. I want it to feel, I want to feel calm about it. And I don't want to judge myself about it. I don't want to judge myself for how I want to be and how I want to feel. I don't want to push. I don't want to strive, but something in me does, right? It feels like it has to. Um, that's a old, what's coming up is like this um, thought system in my uh, perceived family system that you're not doing nothing if you're not working hard. If you're not slaving, then you don't really get credit, validated for doing anything. And honestly, in my family, you don't get validated for anything. So all of that's a lie, a trick, a scandal, and thievery of energy, you know. None of that, none of it matters, really. What you do or what you say, you still don't get any um, love, you know. So um, being calm, being calm, what is that? What, what are some examples of, of you being calm? in your life and <clears throat> can you practice because can you practice that in your everyday doings like washing dishes folding clothes calm or peace or whatever you want to call it or um what what other words could we use let me look it up <laughs> Let me look in the thesaurus because, you know, different words. Um, different words hit different for, for people. I'm going to talk about something else, too. After this calm conversation. It's over with. Synonym. Still. Tranquil. Quiet. Serene. Peaceful. Pacific. Like the Pacific Ocean. That's the calm ocean. Is that what that means? 
I didn't know that. I'm going to write these words down because I'm going to use these in the meditation. How about that? Where's my journal? If I have a stack of journals and the ones that I, when I, I have titles on them. And when I'm like, I think I might have took the idea one, the idea book in the living room because I was using it <clears throat> last night. I, I did take it out there. I just write it in this one. And then hopefully I remember where I put it. And that's what ends up happening too. All right, let me see. Calm. Still. Tranquil. Quiet. You know, you know what just came to me? The pills that people take to put themselves in that state. And for me, it's orgasms. It's like, God, the only time. I legit was laying in bed this morning, like talking to God or whatever after my walk. And I was like, God, the only time I'm like really relaxed is after I have an orgasm, you know? And I know I know a lot of people think it's taboo to talk about sex, but I don't. I, it's whatever. Um, and I don't have sex. Like I don't have anyone in my life to have sex with. And I don't go seeking that out because it's not a toy or something that you use to just do whatever you want with it. It's sacred energy and I respect it, you know? <sighs> But a run, um, uh, I'll be like, God, hello. You're going to have to show me another way to get to that state because that's home for us human beings for in our soul. That's why we like to be calm. We try to calm ourselves because that's our, that is our home. That is where we belong. That is who we are. And we want to feel it as much as possible as quick as possible now, like now, you know, like all the time, like now, but it actually takes us choosing that, that calm, tranquil, serene, peaceful thoughts, because your thoughts are form and you kind of form takes the shape of whatever it is you see. So if you get, we get into how you people say visualize and words of affirmation and stuff. But then you have to, and then you have to see it. And I don't mean just visualization. I mean like how we see things. You know how um, you have that person that, they see things, but it's always like critical or negative or something, right? They're creating with that. That's how they create the world. They see. If they're going to see that until they decide that they want to see something different. How else can I put it? Seeing. So how you see things is very, it's like, what you see if you want peace then you have to see it <laughs> so you have to see your beingness instead of you know what's not there what you what you're afraid of not being there so you can use your seeing to see fear because you're afraid that peace isn't there that love isn't there but can you ever think of a time that love wasn't there so what is it that we're actually afraid of then if we want peace 
then why don't we just choose it all the time? You know? I know why. Because if we chose peace all the time, then our individuality would not be needed anymore. Like your identity and personality and stuff is a form of separation. And it's not bad or evil, you know, but it's a, a construct that was made to be used separate from everything else. It's like, I'm different than everything else. I'm my own person. I can do what I want. But that then that also creates the anxiety and the fear that you, I'm out here by myself. Who's going to save me? Somebody's going to attack me. <laughs> Somebody's going to eat me. You know, it's like, so, <laughs> so you do have to choose what you want. Do you, would you rather have your individuality be on your own island, your own person, all to yourself, or be connected to oneness and the isness and all that is? Do you want to go home? You know, and you can still, like I said, do from being because it doesn't, because then it doesn't even feel like you're doing it. It's like you're on it. I don't want to reduce peace and love and God to Xanax or whatever. Ugh. How dare I? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It's like you're um, have have. Um, had a really great vacation in the mountains, by the beach, by the meadow, by the river, and you've had a great massage. Yeah. And your whole body is relaxed. And you don't need anything. You know when you're calm and relaxed, you don't you automatically all of a sudden you don't need nothing. You're not straining for anything. You're not pressed about nothing. Interesting. It's all in your mind. Everything's in your head. Okay. So, yeah. I like it. All of, I love that. I love all of that. Switch, but switching gears while I'm hunching in the dark or down here. I need to raise that light up. I'm just going to do it. Next time. Gadget, next time. Okay, that was an Inspector Gadget reference, but yeah. Ooh, so I love that. So calm is an adjective. Now I'm talking out loud. And then the verbs would be to soothe. So how do you do calm, okay? Soothe and pacify. I would say be tender, gentle, and kind as well, but I know I, that's probably not a part of it. Placate. I don't know. I've never seen that word mollify before. Appease. Console. Cons consolate. Hush. Hush, little baby. Don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a like being in a state where you're like um it's like a lullaby calm that is that's it if you can keep yourself there then you can go you can get home to being in that state 24 hours a day because and and that's what i wanted to say about practice you know there's no rush. It's kind of like growing up where you just allow yourself to grow up. It's meaning like, you know, you you used to do this when you were younger and now you don't anymore because you gradually grow up into um, a new phase. That's what it should be like. It's no like pushing it you can't force it you really can't because that just kind of enforces your immaturity that's kind of like, that kind of like reinforces the fact that you need to calm down 
like forcing yourself to be calm is what is that <laughs> oh. Oh. you have to allow it to come over you and um and then you have to ask for assistance from the holy spirit whenever you find yourself gotten you find that you've gotten away from that calm space and now that's new for me that's something that i hadn't done on a consistent basis and i didn't really i took for granted my peace as well because i honestly feel like um i was born with a certain amount of peace already like i had already from past lives accumulated some of this work or whatever and um yeah now I, now i just feel like i'm graduating or whatever and really really going taking it home you know home stretching it on out and i'm looking forward to i look forward to every little step i just i'm enjoying the process and i had not been there yet like that's actually new for me right now um yeah but let's switch gears earlier last week I made a video saying that astrology is in reality and that I will not be doing astrology readings on YouTube any longer. Well, I put astrology is an ancient spell and it's not reality. And I knew it would shake the girls a little bit. But I'm hunching my shoulders for those of you who are looking. I'm like, mm, so what? And <laughs> um, I just really have felt convicted to the understanding. You know, the more I come to an understanding of what we actually are, I only want to participate in that energy. I only really want to serve peace and love. And I... um try to bring, bring peace and love to illusion, which drained my energy. And um, it makes the ego happy though, to for the ego to be used for something that's spiritual, it makes it feel in, like I'm enlightened or whatever. Because the ego doesn't really have anything to do with peace and love. The ego is that state, like I was telling you about, where you're frantically afraid of the dark because you have thought yourself as separate and, and you believe it, you know, and then you judge it. And then you want to um, also keep it as like a prized possession. Um, because it's your creation. Well, it seems like it's your creation. You know, it's it's like our we we take pride in our individuality, as, especially as a society. And it's like no one ever will be able to take this away from me. I'm black. I'm a woman. I'm big. I'm proud. I'm loud. I what? Um, I eat spaghetti. <laughs> Oh, I don't eat meat. You are offending. You are offending me in my black woman, big, eating spaghetti. <laughs> the ego just really gets into it. And so, and so, like, you know, even with doing stuff like a podcast and writing books all this is all form and it's not to be taken seriously through the taking this world universe or whatever that the ego has made up 
basically, in order to hide from the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, taking it seriously it what is what makes it plastic. Just kind of like I was talking about, like, being calm versus not being calm or being in fear or whatever um and how to handle your periods of when you go back and forth between the two you know when you feel like you're home and then you feel like i'm lost i'm at sea i i, I can't be found realize that you have thought a thought somewhere during the day you know maybe even in that moment and you have scared yourself and talked yourself thought yourself out of your birthright somewhere some way somehow and all you have to do is ask your guiding light the holy spirit your shining higher mind your true self basically for guidance to get back to where you and ask to see to see things the way God sees them, the way the Holy Spirit sees them, the way the angels see them. Get back, just, just ask. And be like, take me home. <laughs> I didn't end up um, taking the wrong turn, going in the wrong direction. Anyway, astrology and its interpretations are a part of illusion, and there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I'm not condemning it. You know, it's just kind of like um, how people say, I can be pro something and not against it at the same time. Like just because I don't want to add to uh, the interpretations anymore of what people would consider who they are, doesn't mean I'm against it. I, I, I actually think it's fun and I, I don't take it seriously. But because I know other people do take it seriously, I don't want to assist them with taking something seriously that entraps their mind and keeps them in that state of going around in circles with the ego. I rather uh, um, serve love. I call it being a love channel now, you know, um, because that's what we all are anyway. We're channels of love, right? So why not call myself that? Because I want that. That's all I want to ever think of myself as being. Um, um, yeah, I just want to participate in that, only that. And so I knew it would cause some type of triggers because to have someone in the astrology community that some people look up to or whatever, if you know about me at all, I'm not saying I'm famous or anything like that. Um, but I've been able to make a living and then, and then hitch that onto the ego as well. <laughs> Catch that ride and jump on that wagon. Sheesh. My ego has been trying to kick my ass, which which it will do. It's like the ego is very offended when you try to leave its system. You know, it want it, you might even get even more uh, mental attacks, or somebody m might try to put a spell on you. It's like it, it can get real like ego ish, real like um um dark times, shoots and ladders, or whatever. It's like, ugh, demon time. Just because I'm like, no, I want to be more. What you want to be more? What? Say it. You better not. You say, say it. You, you, you I'm like loving. Mm, pow, pow, pow. Mm, mm, beat her, beat her, beat her. It's like you get beat in the gang and you get beat out. <laughs> I just want to be loving, y'all. But that makes me. I don't know why. When I said that, it makes me want to cry. A little bit because it's true I just want to be more loving I just want to be more loving I just want to be love so I've opted in 
to do meditations and sound bathing and stuff like that. And I'll still do Reiki. And if people need, like desperately want an astrology session from me or just want one in general, you can have it. You just have to ask me for it. You have to pay me for it, of course, my time and energy. But it don't mean nothing, though. It's not who you are. You don't need it. And so people have been calling me for astrology sessions. And because of my attitude towards it now, <laughs> when I'm doing consultations, people can tell that I'm like, uh, uh, and they're like, so do I even need an astrology session? I'm like, you don't, but you could, if it would be helpful and useful to you, you could tune into yourself and ask. That's how I feel about all of it. Everything in this dimension, you know, it's, you can do it. It's permissible, you know, um, do it in a state of calmness, of peace and love tranquility quiet and, and 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 then it'll turn out with you'll get that energy back right um that's really all that matters it's the content of love so you you could do you can just ask god the same questions you know and i and i feel like because our our, our identity matters so much to us in our ego or whatever, and there's no judgment on that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, astrology kind of, um, and all and readings and numerology and human design and um, man, I love all those things. They're so much fun. But if the only thing you actually are is love, <clears throat> in heaven, being in a heavenly state, being enlightened. It's just being in full awareness of love everywhere around you, in you, is you. You see love, you drink love, and you know love is drinking you into and you're bathing in love. And me saying that makes me feel good. That's why I keep talking about it. I love it. I love talking about it because it's where I am, where I want to be, and what I want to see. Do you understand? So when you're when you get serious about that, that's all you really want to do is be in that energy and you're willing to go through whatever it takes to get there now all of us are the same we're all that way okay i'm not different and anyone who is enlightened is the same as you Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Everyone who is enlightened is the same as you. No one is different. There's only like different levels and stuff in the ego world. All of us are love and everybody knows everything. Nobody is different. I'm the same. And I've had to allow my ego to die and being able to stomach that because the, my ego pride is like, I'm this, I'm that. That's like, I want to, I want to rap about it. <laughs> my, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'd be about to do it. I ain't going to do it, girl. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me answer this. That was spam. That's who that was. Okay. Hey girl. Hey spam. <laughs> and so yeah. So um, all of that, like astrology and all this, all our all our identities and stuff. I respect it for what it is because people care about it. I'll, I'll, I'll also say this, you know, um, when I do, I, I'm, I'm compassionate, caring, loving, wise person, right? So when I'm doing in, interpretations and stuff with people, especially if I'm doing mass interpretations, so, 
some people come in the comments and be like mad and upset with my interpretations because I go to the furthest depths of the ego of pain and suffering with some of those aspects, say like Pluto in the fourth house or 12th house type issues or whatever, you know, because I'm trying to assist in the awakening process of people who are in those depths. I'm not talking to you if you have already freed yourself. And the reason why I'm able to, um, uh, I'm not going to say that. But anyway, going into that state to and give and to give those interpretations is heavy on its heaviness to me when I don't really take it seriously. And so people are in the comments of that video wondering, it's like, did I have a belief system change? No, I've never taken it all that seriously. I've always just used it to free myself. And I figured that other people want to be free too. And that is the, um, you know, loving thing to do as a fellow for your f fellow other um, love mates, you know, our, your soulmates, we're all soulmates, we all come from love, okay? There's nobody that isn't a soulmate, a love, a loving mate. Um, for all channels of love, there's no one different. Um, is when you free yourself, you share it with others. Duh. Duh, uh, uh. But you don't that you don't necessarily take that other other realm seriously anymore because you're not in it. You don't live in it. After you clear away energies from um, the ego realm, you don't even remember it anymore, and that is called forgiveness. Forgiveness, which I think we can. We can talk about that next time because I went through a whole journey. This is how I got here to this state I'm in right now. Forgiveness, learning about it, talking about it, reading about it. And um, well, I first was right at first I was writing about it in my workbook, in the workbook. Well, our workbook, it's every, it's the world's workbook because everybody needs to do this. <laughs> um, when I got to the section on, for, on forgiveness, I realized I didn't know what it was. And so, and I, and I really care about the content in my workbook a lot. I really wanted to be impactful, honest, I don't like talking about stuff I don't know about, which is why I took, I take steps back from it. I'm like, see, I know the Holy Spirit is guiding me, but I also will go, Holy Spirit, I'm writing about things I haven't experienced yet. I don't think I'm the one to write this. And so I'll, I'll take a step back from it. You know, um, for example, there's three sections, well, more than three, but the main sections are heaven, hell, and the, uh, the earth or whatever, right? And I got to the heaven part, which is the last chapter, and I'm like, yay, I'm almost done. I started writing about heaven, and I'm like, I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm writing about something I have not experienced yet, you know? And so I just take a step back. I need to experience this. I want to know what I'm talking about before I talk about it. But it, I'm also learning that um, I don't have to always be, I don't have to be like in an ecstatic state 24-7. I do know about it because that's where I'm from, that's who I am.
that's who we all are. And so in even writing about it, the way like I'm talking about it and I say, I want to live in it, swim in it, think about it, be around people and talk about it with them and all this, it's the same thing. You have to, in this dimension, practice love. Practice love. So we're going to talk about forgiveness and um, all that the next time. Yeah, how do we, how do we do? How do we do on our uh, our first time back after some months, a year or so maybe. Let's do this. I can do this. I can I can run my mouth and put it on camera too. How about it? Forgiveness, and then I also wanted to talk about um, forgiveness. I had something else on my my mind. It'll come to me. It was about something about practicing love. It's on the tip of my tongue. And so what do we talk about this um, podcast session? Well, backtrack, we talked about how I was talking about astrology is not reality. And we started off talking about what? This is how fast I forget things. We started off talking about, it's also because I'm hungry. Um, I don't remember, and I'm not going to keep you. But I, but I will say this, um, it's all about love anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I love that all of this doesn't matter. None of this matters in the best way. Some might have existential fear when speaking like this, but to me, from my calm state of being, it brings me peace. Oh, we were talking about being calm, you see? I knew that would come to me if I started running my mouth. Calm, being calm. And also, um, I had to realize that a lot of times when I'm not calm, it's because I care more about the form than the content. Like I want, I'm, I'm, I am meditating or being spiritual because something's going bad, which is nothing wrong with that, you know, um, or because I want something. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like whatever gets you and gets you to awaken. And we'll talk about that too. And there, and I keep saying there's nothing wrong with these things. It's because we tend to judge those things. And take them seriously. And take ourselves too seriously and take oh my gosh, I'm a bad person. And we do that thing. And that makes it larger than life to us, like a monster that we can't get away from. And, and then we end up keep repeating. <gasps> and so, <laughs> so um, being light, not taking things seriously and practicing love, being which is being calm, serene and tranquil, actually assists you and going home, which your ego doesn't want you to do. So you'll have this <laughs> tug of war inside of you to where you're like, man, I'm tired of this rat race or whatever. I, I don't wanna do this anymore, whatever this is. But then there's a part of you that still thinks it's like fun to ride around and get like be an individual. And so that's where surrender, surrender has to come in. It's like, then you have to decide, do you want to be your own person or do you want to be like everybody else? <laughs> and everybody else 
is love just like you. And then you'll, the more you choose love, the more you find that you're not giving up anything at all because you don't lose necessarily like um, a personality or whatever while you're in a body or even your preferences and all of that, but you're guided by something else, by love. And that would be the difference. And I'm, and some things will change naturally. Like I said, like you'll put certain things down. Like my diet is drastically different than what it used to be, even like a year ago. And it, and they had changed from that. It's like I keep getting more and more. Like I just, I, it doesn't matter, you know. But uh, you vibrate different. And it's and it's no judgment on anything, and so um, that's the that's the really the only way you can vibrate higher anyway, which is also which is also an illusion, vibrating high and low because there's only love, right? But as you get into uh, more and more in the frequency of love, it is a higher frequency than hate, fear, judgment, jealousy, lack, or whatever. And what makes something a low frequency? The more, the further away you get from love, which means you're getting closer to being an illusion for things not being real, that would be considered um, a low frequency. That's really all that means. And not, that's the first time I ever heard that. Oh. <laughs> Lower frequency is illusion because it's not reality. And I find that um, listening to this type of content for myself over and over again all day helps as well. It's like um, the more you deprogram yourself from the world of illusion, the more you can get yourself into a state of surrender and acceptance because love is allowance of love for yourself and peace for yourself within yourself. Because it's easy for, especially um, for fear-based beings, we're not fear-based beings, it's, it's easier for us to help other people, right? And and focus on others and everybody else needs to do this. But um, that's also why I took a step back too, because I'm like, man, especially trying to uh, write a workbook and feeling like I'm, gi I'm giving to in ways that I feel like I need to receive. And so it's just been a hallelujah journey. That's all. I'll I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I want you to remember that you're love and that all there is is love and not the ego will say, say that that's cheesy and that that is toxic positivity or whatever. But oh well. I'll see you guys next time. I haven't decided what my new schedule is going to be. If it were up to me, it would be every day. But I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to guide me to see what is most loving for me.